to educate, motivate, and build one another through shared knowledge and success. This is Young and Successful, and these are your hosts, Jay Chukwi, Kenny Awashika, and PJ Luminan. Welcome back to the Young and Successful podcast. Okay, Kenny, how are you feeling today? I'm good. That's what I'm talking about, man. I would like to go ahead and introduce our guest so we can jump right into it. Very excited for this one as well, as always. Our guest today is a wife, mother of three children, okay? She's been working in the uh, childcare field for over 20 years and currently serves as a deputy director for the Premier Early Childhood Center. Our guest as well is also the owner of All Yours Events Limited Liability Corporation. All Yours Events is an event concierge company located in Maryland that provides staffing and planning services. Please join me in welcoming Yamisi. Ooh, hey, my everybody. God, my God, my God. Good to have you. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for having me. Podcast, Yamisi. Hey, I want to start by thanking you for accepting our invitation to come chit chat with us here on Young and Successful. Right. I know that your time is very important and it means a lot to us that you're joining us here tonight. Of course. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. Kenny was like, he, they want me to come on the show. Shucks. You know, they don't ask just anybody. <laughs> yeah, we don't ask just anybody. Hey, yeah. <laughs> we, we only have to ask the best of the best, you know. So I, I think that we're, we're doing a pretty good job with that one. Right? Thanks. So um, before, we, before we get into it here, and we have a few questions for you, um, tell us a little bit more about, about yourself. Right. And a little bit more about all your events, right? And the services that you provide. And how did you get into this field? Is this something you've always been interested in? Or you kind of picked it up along the way? Well, um, as you said, um, I am a wife, I'm a mother, um, and I've been in education for quite a while. And I think that's my first, my first love, of course, was education, right? Children, right. them grow. Um, and actually helping adults move through that field as well. So even though I loved working with children, I knew I wasn't gonna teach for long, right? Because I was very interested in how adults grew as educators, right? Especially um, in early childhood. So um, I've been doing that for a minute. But as far as the events aspect, I've always loved planning events. You know how you're always like, the, there's a designated party person in the family. Right, the person that seems to make mm-hmm. time and cross all the T's and dot all the I's, right, when it comes to an event. And um, always like the host, right, that, that's me. So even when, um, before I got married and it's just me and my sisters or and my friends, you know, if we're going to have something, I'm going to be the hostess with the mostest, right? You know, that was like my thing. And you start doing it for like people, because everyone keeps coming to you. And, you know, oh, yeah, sure, I don't mind, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then you think, hey, now, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> this thing is starting to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, you know, let's, let's see. And then you kind of see people doing what you're doing, but it's a job. And of course, the best jobs are jobs that you, that you love, right? And you're always good at it, and always trying to grow up because it's something that you love doing. So um, that's why I kind of fell into that. It's something that you've always done kind of, un- I've always done unofficially. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and make this, uh, make this official. And so as I was going through the planning part of it, um, a lot of the events, obviously, um, even though they were small when I first started, I needed staff. And I would be very uncomfortable kind of looking around if I had to hire staff because I needed them to do what I wanted them to do. And I needed them to know how I worked, what my expectations were. And I was like, you know what, for all this stress, I'll just get my own, right? And I'll get my own staff. And that way I can take mine with me. Um, And a friend of mine who actually had a staffing company was like, hey, you know what, how about I just send you all my clients because I'm sick of doing it. I was like, hey, sure. So I would say she was very instrumental with that. Her name is Diane Cordry. And so, of course, everyone that would call her, she would be like, I'm not doing that job anymore, but this young lady is. And that's how that kind of took off. So essentially, you kind of found something that you love doing, right? And it was in this, I guess, in this field that uh, really the there was a need for a solution 
within that field and just through that frequency and doing it all the time you kind of you saw the momentum and you just took that leap and uh in that process as well right because it sounds it sounds to me like there's also that idea of the proximity principle right and which i talk about it with kenny sometimes and for those who don't know the proximity principle is is just that idea that when you're around the people who are doing the things that you're interested in doing right naturally you kind of progress within that that realm and it sounds like that's kind of like a little bit of what happened there right being around people who are doing what you're doing and that kind of help you gain that business as well through that right so i think that that's that's pretty awesome now with 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 rolling into that into that uh into this event planning business it sounds like it's something that you would have to um you know because you you have people that work with you as well right and you can yeah. have to lead them uh, it sounds like that's that's something where you have to kind of harness some leadership skills right this way you can mm-hmm. guide your team and and execute on on all the tasks that you have at hand can you talk to us a little bit more about what you did and and how you kind of worked on yourself and improved your leadership skills within your company you know i think that that was actually what made me um successful like or right. kind of made my journey not super hard in the beginning was because you're right one of the driving things you need you need to be able to lead a team you need to be able to keep the team right. on the same page and you need to be able to problem solve and you need to be able to get through a crisis with grace right because think about it when you have weddings everything that can go wrong does go wrong or even a party but the person that's celebrating doesn't need to see you run around with your hair sticking up like you've got mad cow disease. So it's like, but coming from the job that I had anyway, when I started this, I was a director at a um, challenge center. So I was already leading the team and the, the staffing was very diverse. So I was used to working with people that were older than me, far younger than me, had a lot of experience, had no experience. So kind of, you know, having that, taking that skill set and moving it over. I ran my business the same way, you know, basically setting clear and concrete expectations of what I needed, what I wanted. um, And also focus, letting them know that we are, this is a brand, right? So where I was working at the time as a not-for-profit, that was very well known, that is very well known. And when we would step out, I would tell them, whenever you leave out of here, you still represent this organization. So like, if you go out on the weekend, you kind of act the fool, you still represent this organization. And sometimes we can sever ties with you for something you've done completely off the clock. Like if you're at a party where there's underage drinking going on, that affects the brand. And so when I started my own company, I basically relayed the same message, right? When we're moving out here, we're at a party or we're working, we're staffing, your customer service is top notch because this is the brand, right? So even if I'm not here with you, as my business grew, I was able to kind of, you know, be able to send people on, but, you know, that's um, because they understood the brand and what we were going for. But yeah, so as far as uh, what I had to do to beef up my leadership skills, I will say I did get a lot more um, organized and I had to build capacity within my organization, which even though I had to do that at my previous job, it was easier because we were together for 40 hours a week, right? So if you're a teacher in the classroom, I'm coming into your classroom, I'm observing you, I'm giving you notes and I'm training you. If we are having events, we're not seeing each other that often. You have another typical job. So you know, I have to kind of still build capacity, even when this may not necessarily be your primary uh, priority, right? But I had to kind of figure out how to do that so that we could expand. Because if we didn't build capacity, we weren't going to be able to expand. We hear this from people a lot. You know, being a mother of three kids, having a full-time job, being a director at your day job, and still starting the business. There's just that fear factor. There's that leap that you have to take that most people are just scared to take. Like, okay, what do I need to do? Can I do this? How can I do this and still be effective at my job? Um, 
I mean, there's just a lot of fear factor and the unknown that people have to consider before they jump into something like this. And, you know, at Young and Successful, we want to show people that there are people out there that have done it. And, you know, can you please tell us a little bit and show people how you've done it and see if there's something they can, you know, replicate? First things first, you don't do what's trendy. Because a lot of times people say, hey, have you heard uh, people are flipping houses? That's making money. But it's trendy. It may not be something that you're good at. So you have to do all this extra, all this, it doesn't come natural to you. So you are trying your best to fit this, you know, square peg in this round hole. And you're basically, you're working overtime. For me, I found something, first of all, that came natural to me. And I was able to use what I had to enhance that. So I didn't have to, like my first set of staff were people that I worked with already. So I'm not out here trying to recruit and, and like, you know, outside of too far outside the box. What can I do with what I have now to get myself started? So when you think that way, sometimes people are looking at what other people are doing and they start shooting off so far. What they don't understand is that these businesses that you're saying are 10 years old. Right? Or some of the, even if it's a five year old business, you're two months old, right? So you gotta crawl first. You have to let yourself do that. And I think I paced myself. There are some businesses that you say, you just gotta, you know, start the business to just jump in there and quit your day job. Hey, if that's not what that business is calling for. But for me, like I said, I have to make smart decisions. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, there are responsibilities that we have. Right. So am I going to toss my day job? No, for two reasons. One, you need a steady stream of income while you build this other business. Mm. But the second piece is that I also love my day job. I love them both. If I had my, you know, as as I grow, right, if and I come upon an opportunity to have two businesses, I will have an early learning center and I will have probably an event space where we host events. And I, so I don't feel like I have to give up one for the other. And I feel like sometimes people feel like they have to toss one and keep the other. And it's like, if you love them both, you know the capacity and the scale. Don't bite off more than you can chew, trying to keep up with the Joneses in that field. Another thing too is that I had to find my, my space. So for instance, there's several event planners roaming around DC. And people are like, oh, uh, thinking, am, am I trying to, am I going to try and compete with them? I said, no, we're not pushing for the same client. I'm not trying to get into your space, right? I know my client and you know yours. That way, when your client walks across my face, she comes to you. And if mine walks across your face, yours comes to mine. When your child know, is different, if you're like, you know what? I want to do what they're doing because I'm just good at it. You're going to put your own spin on it anyway. If you have some folks that they're trying to balance being a wife, being a mother, and trying to be somebody else. It's easy to do it when you're not trying to be somebody else. This is who I am. I love customer service. I, I you know, I even when I go to restaurants, the customer service sucks. I'm not going back. I'm not eating there. So what I do is who I am. That's why I'm good at it, right? Because I don't have to trick anybody. And I don't have to trick myself into doing it. I can just be myself and give you 110%. Right. So when you're trying to be somebody else, it makes it hard to balance because when you're trying to balance in real life, you're trying to balance who, the different aspects of you. I try to balance Yemisi mom, Yemisi wife, Yemisi um, deputy director, Yemisi entrepreneur. Right. But if I'm trying to balance Yemisi stock market specialist or whatever, that's not going to work. That's not me. That's not who I am. That's not what I'm good at. That's not who I am. So I would say anyone that's trying to balance these things, first of all, pick something that is going to come natural to you so that it is pretty much you're trying to balance yourself. There's no one on the racetrack but you. Stop trying to do what other people are doing. Even if you are going to be a planner and someone else is a planner, you should still have your own spin on it. People should know your signature. They should know what it looks like. I'm not the only one that does staffing in the DMV. Right, several people do staffing, mm -hmm. but they know when my folks are there and when they're not there. Right, I think one of uh, my cousins made a comment. He said, "Oh, I went to an event 
And I saw Yamasee staff there. I wasn't there, but he could tell because they had worked for him before at one of his events and he saw how they moved. He knew they were mine, right? So there's a signature on how we do things. And you have to, be, that's what I mean by find your own space. That way you're not competing with anybody. And because you're only balancing yourself, then you know when your pause button is. Because I'm not racing with anybody, I know when to slow myself down, when to pump my brakes, when to expand. How I expand is up to me. So I'm not doing it too fast and sloppy because I'm not like, oh my gosh, she's expanding. I don't care. I'm balancing Yemisi stuff. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Um, I mean, so much, so much good stuff you just dropped there. One of the biggest things is you take on a risk to, to kind of get into business, right? But you still maintain your job, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I think that this applies for everyone who is trying to go into that entrepreneurship field. Um, have a way to still pay your bills, right? While you pursue your, while you pursue your, your dreams. Right now, the next couple of things I, I hear, right, I just have that being yourself, enjoying what you do, and understanding your customer. I really found this really good because I think when you enjoy what you do, first of all, it becomes effortless, right? I think that this is how you know we all have 24 hours in a day, right? Some people do more with the 24 hours than others, but I think that to be able to accomplish that much more during the day, it is easier when 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 the things you're doing are effortless mm-hmm. right and, and if it's something that you enjoy it's more likely going to be effortless because you would always find time to do it despite what else is going on and when you're able to be yourself while doing it i think that that is also uh, something that is really key something also awesome that you said there was understanding your customer sometimes people do not give it too much deep thought before they go into business mm-hmm. but i really thought that, that was really cool you were able to not only being that field, understanding customer on a deeper level where you know, I guess there's not really competition for you. You're not here to compete with other people. Mm-mm. You have a target audience and you know what you need to do to deliver to that pe- to the, to that group of people. That's right. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that was that was that was an awesome li- uh, that was an awesome list. And then the, the other the other question that we ask here a lot is the challenges. Entrepreneurs and people, even with jobs, you don't have to be an entrepreneur because I'm sure you have challenges at the job already. And then you're now doubling that with the entrepreneurship challenges, you know. And those of us that have been in business know to expect challenges. Uh, <laughs> and for those people that are that are yet to start their businesses or yet to get a job or looking to get a job. Can you tell us a little bit about how you face these challenges and how you overcome them and still keep a normal head, being a mother and a wife at the same time? Well, I think, well, challenges, I will say, um, is sometimes, especially in events, well, let's just talk business in general. You kind of set some things in place, but it doesn't always work out. So when you're, especially when business is new, things are kind of unexpected. So let's say you start a business in January, the seasons for whatever business have not turned around all the way until the year comes back around. So all the way the year is moving, things are coming that you haven't seen before. Trends are coming that you haven't seen before. So just when you, it seems like in the beginning of your business, just when you think you're finding your footing, something kind of clips you up again, just because the season of the business it's still stretching and you haven't made it through all four seasons of the business, right? You're still trying to see where that goes. And I think um, the first thing I would say is like, don't quit your day job. That's how I got to that challenge because what happens when you have a business and you're getting, you know, things kind of tossed in and thrown at you that you weren't expecting, they're always financial woes. It's always a financial component. But so if you have tossed your day job, those financial woes will knock you off your feet, you know, whereas, you know, you're able to kind of keep yourself stable while you get through that season and keep pressing forward, right? So that's the first thing I would definitely say. The next thing is when you are starting a business, you have to identify in your circle who is team you because no one does it alone. And especially as a mom, you need, you're going to need some help. So for me, Team Yamasee is my husband, Ralph, right? 
And I mean everything from, I have so much to take to this event. I need you to drive the other car and bring it. You know, like, or, hey, I need you to, I left something. I need you to bring it here. You know, or obviously now he's watching the kids for every single day, every weekend for the next five weekends because I'm not there because I'm at an event, you know, but you have to identify that because if you go in, especially if you already have a job, like at my other job, you have to, I establish myself as someone that is a hard worker and I don't um, play with my first job. What do I mean by that? I'm not going to rob Peter to pay Paul. So I'm not going to start not going to work or showing up late. You understand what I'm saying? To work my second job. I don't neglect my first job. Why? Because my first job is Team Yemisi because that provides financial stability. So I'm always going to have integrity at my first job. My husband is Team Yemisi because, you know, he's my, he's my support, right? And like I said, when you're finding people to join your company and you're trying to fish in through, making sure that they buy into your vision, the team, Ralph already knows my vision. He's already bought in. So I already have like a built-in partner. And you're going to need that. When people start and say, oh, I have a job and kids and I'm going to do it all by myself. I'm not saying you have to have a husband to do it, but you have to identify who is going to be your core help. Because if you think you're going to split yourself into three different places, it's not going to work. There are going to be some sacrifices you make on the way. And if one of the sacrifices is, hey, I'm not going to be able to make um, this, um, take, uh, this birthday party, right? Then, okay, coordinate with a family member who's going to come pick your kids up and take them to the party. You know, but you have to kind of already figure out who is going to be in your space. It's going to help drive you forward. Just to say, what, what's called multiple trees make a village. It takes multiple trees to make a forest. I think that's what I was trying to say. There you go. It's not so true. You no, know, that was a book that I check you with the seeds there, man. I'm about to go, I'm about mm-hmm. to go farm around y'all, man. I'm about to go farm around y'all, man. You should be shaking with the seeds there, man. You know what I mean? Kenny the <laughs> farmer, what happened, bro? You, you showed up today with only one shoe or what, man? <laughs> you need multiple trees for, for you to have that forest. And I've been hearing this concept from folks that are in the industry that think that the most successful businesses or the most in- successful even as an employee, you know, or, or as an employer, is just done by one person. You know, people look at Michael Jordan as like, oh, Michael Jordan made the bulls. And I'm like, no, you have to look at the entire yeah. team. You know, Dennis Rodman did this part, Scottie yeah. Pippen, you know, everybody does their part. It takes a team to make this happen. And the most successful businesses, you might not know, are actually done by partners. And in your mm-hmm. team, you have a huge uh, set of partners that you work with that you work with on a, on a regular basis. But you said something that was quite interesting that she and I actually experienced at the early stage of us uh, working on the investment club uh, stack. Uh, we started small, just like you did. You started small and we experienced some major financial woes at the early stages. And if we were quitters yeah. or if we were saying we were going to run this by ourselves, some folks will have probably quit and just never come back into investing. And while we were trying to do that, we were not trying to mess up our job. We were studying for we were studying for like eight months straight. Every lunch hour, we were on it. Yeah. After lunch, we got back. We went through to like two o'clock in the morning while still trying to maintain our full-time day job. And sometimes on the, on the day job, we're working late, working extra hours. Mm-hmm. But it takes determination. It takes discipline. Now, yeah. that is the next question. I'm not sure if you want to ask that question about the old discipline. Um, it's not easy because it's just, you have so much to do, but then how do you discipline yourself yeah. to keep yourself going without burning yourself out? Do, do you want it? At the end of the day, the question is, do you want it or not? Right? And if you, when you talk about burning yourself out, <laughs> When you, for you, when you get burnt out, a lot of people get burnt out over time, right? So, but if you are working towards a goal, it's because there's nothing that comes easy. So if you are burning the midnight oil and you're grinding on something and you're seeing it form, mind you, I didn't say seeing it form means that they're not going to still be like these hiccups, but you're seeing them form and you're seeing the hiccup as a learning process. You appreciate the fact that this is still the beginning of the business and you're going to have daggers and things thrown at you. 
then you are working towards something. Nobody wakes up rich. And I think that's the thing that people, when it gets hard, they say, how are you balancing it all? How did you think it was supposed to be? In the business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people, <laughs> they, they, that's what they say. Like, uh, if I were you, I don't know how, how I'll do. Like, how do you keep a job? And so what you going to do? Not have a job? Like, how did you think, what did you think this process was supposed to be like when you set out to start a business from scratch? You set out to start a business that has a good reputation that, you know, that, that has, that, that, that is worth something and that has value, right? Generational value. What did you think? If it was that easy, everybody would have one. So you have to make a decision at that point if you want it or not. Because you can always have your day job or you can say, I really love events. And you can go work for an event place. You can find a venue and go work for them. Or you can find an event planner and go and be their assistant, Right? Or I can find someone like when the lady said, I'm sick of staff. I could have told her, no, keep the business. I'll manage your staff for you, right? And she could have been paying me because you don't want the responsibility. See, that's what the truth is. When you get into a business and things start, you have to, you're, you have to know that you have to take it all, the wins and the losses. That's the scary right. part about entrepreneurship. Because when you work under somebody in Solicitor's Corporation, when the stuff goes wrong, you know what you can say? Corporate. Well, <laughs> Yeah, you know, if it was me, I wouldn't do it, but the company policy is. But now you got to make the hard decisions and you have to say, I made the decision. It's not popular, but this was best for the organization. And you have to, you have to now be the unpopular person. So when you are grinding and as long as you are not working foolishly and don't hustle backwards, like you guys are studying and burning midnight oil, not because that is what you plan to be doing 10 years from now. Like your business is just starting. So of course you're studying and doing all this stuff. If you are in a business for 10 years and you are still where you were a year ago, this may not be the business for you. Hmm. You have to look at your own journey and see how far you've gone, why you have gone that distance. And is that, is that okay? That's what I'm saying about don't look at anybody else. Because if you know what resources you have, your movement may not be at the same pace as somebody else's. But you know, you have to hold yourself accountable. You know when you've been slacking. Mm -hmm. And you know when you're burnt out because you tried to party on the weekend. You know when you're burnt out when you actually had opportunity to sleep, but you played the, the game on your, on your phone for three hours, right? So, you know, right. understand, like, if you're burnt out from doing foolish things, then you need to reset and figure out if you want it or not. If you're not burnt out but tired because you're working towards a goal, that's what it's supposed to be. It's not willy nilly. It's not supposed to be easy. If it's easy, you don't value it. You're supposed to work for it. I was um, pregnant and I was having my kid and I asked the lady, I said, if I just lay here, will the baby slide out? The lady said, it's called labor for a reason. It's not called a walk in the park. They call it labor because you about to labor for the baby. Now get to push it. And I was like, I know that's right. You know, with this business, it's supposed, it's not supposed to be smooth selling. You're not going to appreciate it. You're not going to value it. It's supposed to be rough. It's supposed to be hard work, right? You know, you're not supposed to be doing the same amount of hard work for 10 years, but in the beginning, you're supposed to dig for it. You're supposed to grind for it. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. And which, by the way, uh, <clears throat> that's actually an idea that if you could just sit there and the baby pops out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think it sounds to me like there is an issue which needs to be resolved. And if I can just create something that can allow women to just, we can call it the extractor 3000. Man, you would sell out. You would be, now, now that, you would, that's supply and demand right there. You'd be a rich man. Hey, listen, man, patent pending. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty awesome, man. That's, I think that was some really good stuff you shared there. Um, just really amazing. Um, you just, discipline right just gathering all these gems that allow you to be better than something that you said that, that really struck me was if your business is the same next year like it was last year then maybe it's not something for you and it's something that i you know my uncle said it to me once before right he said you know you have to be better tomorrow than you mm -hmm. are today right and that has always stuck with me so 
I think it's really important that as you keep pushing forward, you should be able to one, uh, keep tabs on yourself to make sure that you are progressing over time, mm -hmm. right? If you're not progressing, right? figure it out it is what it is right sometimes you know you can stall you just have to accept it for what it is figure out what you need to do to get the wheels moving again and if you're not if you're in the same place that you were before um i think that that is you know again it's something that you should definitely think about at the same time looking back at what you've accomplished also allows you to um to see what you've done and get an appreciation. Mm -hmm. and, and I found that, especially when it comes to things like getting burned out with just crushing it all the time or just continuously working, it is good to stop and just see how far you've come and take time to appreciate where you are now, right? Uh, because yeah. it's one of those things, so as long as you keep going and going, you may never get satisfied. That is just the way some of these things are. Right? That's just human nature. You get something new and you want something more, mm -hmm. right? So... I think taking time out to appreciate how far you've come, it's, uh, it's just as important as well. Definitely. Like, you know, I'm not yeah. at the end, but I know last year I didn't have X, Y, and Z, and hey, maybe I should do this a little different, you know, but Absolutely. you have to do a self-assessment all the time and figure out um, what you're going to keep doing. You know, I was making the decision. I say, you know what? I like planning events. It's, fun for me it's not work it's super fun i like watching it all come together um uh, but my plan my game plan for myself is to build a business that i don't have to go to every day like i want my to be to watch the money right it's to kind of pop in and you know and i want to oversee the business i don't want to be the legs and the feet forever and ever right so I said, well, let me see, because I was, I, I was staffing for even other event planners. So if you say, yeah, let me see all your events, they'll be, oh yeah, she handles our staffing. So I was like, let me see if I really want to market us as a planning company, even though I'm good yeah. at it, I like it. So I booked weddings, birthday parties every weekend for five weeks. And at the end of those five weeks, I resolved in myself that I would not be focusing full force on planning events because I have to be there. And I was like, this is, it is very tiring because I, you don't have time to get yourself together. And folks that actually have planning as their sole business, they have a wedding on Friday, a wedding on Saturday, sometimes on Sunday. And they're, during wedding season, they're doing that every single weekend, like throughout the summer, sometimes, you know, through all, the entire year, like they have very few breaks. And I'm thinking, I don't want to always be the person at the job on the weekend. And I don't want to be like when I say, OK, I'm going to take vacation. That means there's no money coming in here. So when I did that kind of self-assessment, I started focusing a lot on the staffing because that's the job that once I build capacity, and one day we have five different jobs because I have different managers, right? But that came from like a assessment, looking back on how I felt about that. And you have some planners, that's their thing. They love it. And I'm like, hey, that's what's up. You know, I'll take a wedding here, probably a wedding in three more months. Maybe not, you know, but I, I made it my business to say, what do I want for myself in the long haul? And my primary focus is that I don't have to be at every job all the time. And if I'm planning, then yes, I do. I'm the person. That's, that, that's pretty mm -hmm. interesting, though, because that's like succession planning at the same time, getting that freedom, which we all want. That's one of the reasons yeah. why we get into business in the first place. Exactly. That's the end goal. And if I have to show up there every weekend, what am I working for myself for if I don't get my weekends back? True freedom, uh, financial freedom and freedom of your own time. And that's interesting because it also kind of ties into the next question, which I was actually going to ask you, which was, what are your your goals for uh, for your company over the next five years? And you kind of shed some light on that with us. And uh, of course, the other thing uh, which I was also going to ask, which you kind of uh, also touched on it, but you can you can dive deeper into it. Uh, but what is your definition of success? Okay, it's funny because we were talking about this on Saturday, but really for 
and I don't think I was vocal about it, but really, right. it <laughs> get vocal. <on> it. <laughs> I wasn't like, yeah, I was now is your time. Now is your time, man. <laughs> Go for it. Uh oh. <laughs> so my my definition of success um for me means basically being happy and excited about making the steps towards my end goal. And I say towards my end goal because I might move it, I might shift it, depending on what you yeah. know. What I, what I want, but I have to keep moving forward, right? Onward and upward. So if I'm not stagnant, if I have moved forward and I'm happy because some people move forward, but when they look at what they had to do to get there, do you feel successful? Mm. Everyone's like, oh, you know, this is what's up. And, but how do you, do you feel happy about that? Whereas if you have to take a certain route and your pace is not as fast, but you know where you're going, it's worth it. And that to me is success. That to me is, you know, I don't have to, I don't say, okay, for me to be successful, we have four branches all over the world or, or you know, the country or whatever. Yeah. Uh-uh. You know, what I'm working towards and I'm getting there and every year I kind of, you know, you reassess yourself on a monthly basis. For me, um, after event season, I would kind of take a look because event season typically falls like in those warm months in the DMV and mm -hmm. then you can assess kind of see what things so yeah that's success you know for me is you know being happy and jovial as you make those consistent steps towards your end goal consistent growth consistent growth I love it I like that well yeah let me see amazing amazing time Okay, can you, do you have anything else to add before we go ahead and wrap the podcast here? Oh, man. There was something she was, she was saying earlier uh, when she was defining success. And uh, right. I just really wanted to add a little bit to it. So I was mm -hmm. watching, uh, I was doing some of this online education through YouTube about <laughs> psychology. I'm sorry, of... take that back, sir. It's University of YouTube. <laughs> 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 right. I was at the University of YouTube. Is that there you good? go. <laughs> All right uh learning about the psychology because you know we're working on starting this investment club and you and i have been working at it now for going mm. this year will be two years shay i was learning about the psychology of how do you run these things because now you're managing other people's money you know you're mm. trying to help people build wealth mm. and there was this survey that was asked to these attendees of this survey and they asked you know would you for you to be successful at investing or trading other people's money, would you be willing to mess somebody else up to achieve your goal? Mm. Mm. Would you take advantage of someone else for your own gain? And some of them said yes. And then when you were saying earlier that your definition of success is to be happy, to know yeah. that when you get to your end point, you're still happy you have not done anything wrong. Now, just yeah. like, man, that just came back full circle to me because... Some people will do anything for success. Mm -hmm. But then are you going to be happy at the end of it? Yeah. So yeah, what you said there was like, whew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is, that is really, yeah. I had to think about that a bit. Just because of the way my mind works, man. I, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I have an argument with something, but, but because I was thinking to myself like, huh, if you're going to do anything for success, how bad is anything? You know what I mean? But then I guess it's also have to look at it as what is what is it that will stop someone from slipping? Because yeah. bad to some people is not bad to others, mm. which is interesting because you kind of wonder now at this point, does it give some other people an unfair advantage if they would do something else just because their morals may not align with yours, right? Mm. They may be willing to go that much farther and it does but not bother them. You know, Shay, let me jump in really quickly. That's the main reason why the first thing I said at the top of the podcast was don't run the race with anybody. Yeah. Because you're not looking over the advantage. You don't even see what kind of unfair advantage they have because mm -hmm. you guys are not in the same race. You're only racing with yourself. So I don't care how fast your stuff is growing or what kind of car you're driving. I'm, Yemesi is working on Yemesi's goal straight ahead. So when I'm trying to measure how far I've come, I measured where I was last year. Now far you've, how far you've come. Mm. 
So mm -hmm. if you are robbing Peter to pay Paul and doing all kinds of things to move yourself forward, it doesn't really matter to me because my measure of happiness doesn't depend on what you're doing. Absolutely. So it can make me compromise, you know, self, myself in that way. Because I, I don't, I mean, we're not doing this together. We may even be doing the exact same thing. We're both staffing, I'm staffing, you're staffing. Uh, when I first started, there was a young lady and she literally called me and told me, you need to change your prices because I need to charge X, Y, Z. So you need to up your prices so I can charge so, so, and so. And I was like, well, then go ahead. You've been doing, she had been doing this for probably like, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so. And I had just started like that, that year. I'm like, you, I, I can have my introductory prices to boom. I have my own marketing strategy. Do you? Right. She literally kept, she called my cell phone and she was going on and on and on and on. And I, I told somebody, I said, I hope she knows that when I'm ready to make adjustments to my price list, I'm not going to be calling her. Absolutely. Asking her. She was, no she, was, she, was, she was she was on Instagram checking out <laughs> everybody else flexing and she thought yeah. you were flexing so she had to try to say okay girl we're up here flexing <laughs> Absolutely. why is she over here on this race track like let me just just to you just to you you know so yeah as far as do they have an unfair advantage I don't, not to me, because I'm not necessarily looking at them and I'm not measuring myself up against what they're doing. Mm. You, can't like that. you can't maintain that. I like that. Absolutely. Stick to your game plan. Run your own race. And That's right. Get your own results, right? There you Man. go. Yeah, Missy, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast here today. Hope you had a good time. I had a jolly good time. Oh, amazing. Well, be, before before you go and before we close out the podcast here, uh, just one, I guess, piece of information. Right, I, I decided today I would like to share a new piece of information with someone. And if if you take on it, cool. If you don't take on it, cool. But we shared it, right? And for okay. me today. Uh, what I would like to ask you is, are you uh, invested in any cryptocurrency? No. Mm. Well, I would recommend that you at least look into it. Just read about it. Maybe watch a video about it because I think cryptocurrency is the future. And you've, right. probably heard it, you've probably heard it from other people as well and all that good stuff. But, you know, uh, I have cryptocurrency now and the whole world must know. <laughs> yeah. Say, are you offline and you and Kitty can tell me about the cryptocurrency. Remember how I yeah. talked about the thing about if it's not your thing, don't try and yes. force it to be your thing. There you cryptocurrency. So <laughs> we can we can talk yeah. about how you guys can tell me what to do with cryptocurrency, but I'm not gonna pretend like hey. I know what to do. Not, hey, it, it, it's it's yeah. just shared knowledge now. We're just sharing yeah. information. Yes, and so we're going to dive deeper into that again, and we'll tell you more about it later on. Until yes. then, and onto our next book. Hopefully, we can have you on again as well. I'll be happy to do that. Right, yeah. we have a lot of topics to talk about. Right, so follow us on Instagram, Yes Podcast Official. Follow us on Facebook, Young and Successful, and of course, like the video, subscribe, subscribe. to our YouTube channel. We're trying to get to one thousand followers. Right. We are we are at 50 something, dude. We are breaking ground. Tonight. We're ripping it, man. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's so right. We're not 50 something last week. So, hey, let's get it. Exactly. <laughs> and you, we're running you. our own race, right? So, until, right. Next <laughs> until next time, Che out. Double out. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys.